Hey. I like this little thing, girl. Okay. <laughs> eh, eh. <laughs> eh, eh. Let's see. I'll do this one first. Oh, I know, Let's see. Too legit. Too legit to quit. Hey, hey. Hey, 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 everyone. This is your girl, Terrell Ravenel. I am here. I'm going to hide you real quick. I'm going to hide you real quick. And we will bring you back in just a minute. I am here with a very special guest on this evening. You guys are in for a treat. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about managing mental health, why that's so important, what that does to the marriage, what a healthy marriage or toxic marriage can due to the mental health of individuals. I share with you my story about mental health and the anxiety episodes is what I call them because that's exactly what it felt like when I was dealing with it at the time. You know, how I got through those things and how I continue to cope and manage that area of my life. And I'm excited to be on with one of my dear friends uh, who I've met dec uh, over a decade ago in San Diego, California. She's going to share her story and we're just going to have a dialogue on tonight. So what I want to do first, if you guys are not a part of my email community, please go to wiveswhowin.com right now and go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe to the email community. And the reason why I say that is because that is how you will get all of the good nuggets first. All the emails that go out, all the information that goes out. If you want to stay in the know, want to know what's going on with Wives Who Win, what's going on with Trail what's going on uh, with our, our events and things of that nature, that's where it is. So take some time, write the email, write the website down, or make sure you go to wiveswhowin.com and be a part of that community. So I'm going to read her bio. And when I read her bio, then I'll bring her in. I'll let her share some things with you, and then we'll get into the conversation. Is that okay? I know this is in a group, so we're not... Oh, let me see if it allows me to share. I don't think I can share in the group. I can start a watch party, but let's see if I can go somewhere else. Stern group. Oh, yeah. I'm going to share on my page. Khadija, I can do that. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to share my page. I do ask you guys, if you're on here, you've been enjoying this uh, these lives for the last few weeks, please go ahead and share. If you know anyone that's struggling, dealing, or challenged with mental illness or managing their mental health, please go ahead and share. I'm going to do that right now. So just give me a minute. Managing marriage. And... Okay, because I cannot multitask. It is a myth. It is a myth. I'm going to say a question. All right, all right. So let's go ahead and read the bio. I'm not going to read her entire bio, right? I know her, but I still want to make sure I get uh, some pertinent information of who she is so you guys can know. So her bio says she's vibrant, passionate, loving, charismatic, and a go-getter. Okay, let's get off here. Uh, oh, hold on. I'm hearing myself twice. Hold on. Okay. She's vibrant, passion, loving, charismatic, and a go-getter are just a few words to describe her. She's a minister. She's an author. She's a keynote speaker, and she is a coach. She's a purpose coach. She helped other individuals to identify uh, their purpose and to be able to walk in their purpose single uh uh, authentically. And she's been doing that for quite some time. She said in, it wasn't until December 2007 when she fully surrendered her life to Jesus. And I can say from that point, she's been sold out. Doom, 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 doom. <coughs> she's a definitely a lover of God, lover of Jesus. And she lives her life that way. She is married, currently resides resides in Delaware, um, but often commute back and forth to the DMV area. And like I said, I met Khadija. I don't even know how long it's been. It's been a long time in uh, San Diego, California. And we used to have uh, Bible studies around her table at her home. And we just, we were hungry for God. We, we desired God. We desired to uh, experience him in a way that we'd never experienced him before. We were just trying to figure it all out. So without further ado, I present to uh, some and I, uh, what does it say? I present to some, introduce to some and present to others. Khadija, Carol, come on Woo! in, girl. <laughs> United hey. Church, church. I present to some and I introduce to others. Oh, wherever that goes, I don't know. Y'all can see I'm a, I'm church, y'all, but I'm not church like that. Like yeah. I don't know all the homiletics and all that <laughs> stuff. I don't know church language to that degree. I just know how to shout and dance when it comes to church stuff. Um, but I don't know how to do all that other stuff. Hey, girl. <laughs> Hey, how about I was super excited. I was telling Trevor before we got on this video, y'all, that, you know, we in this stay at home or shelter in place, whatever they calling it. 
And so this is my date, okay? So I got dressed for y'all. So I got a little lip gloss on just for y'all. Because if you would have saw me two minutes ago. <laughs> it would have been a different story. It would have been a different story. But how do I create this um, watch party? I'm trying to do this watch party. You know, I'm a little, I feel like I'm acting like my mom now. A little slow. I don't know because this is a whole new thing. So you start the watch party. Because what I did, I started it. And it allowed me to share in a group. So I was able to share in a specific group or a specific page. So if you just do uh, oh, so share. I got to go to my page or your page? You can go to my page or you should be able to go my page because it's not shared on your page. Okay. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Come on in. Come on in. We're talking about managing marriage yes. and mental health. And I really asked the question, can you manage marriage and mental health? Yeah. Like, is that even a thing? Uh, yeah, I know many people are challenged in this area of their marriage. Mm -hmm. Many people are challenged, honestly, in this in this area in their relationships, Khadija. It's just not marriage because you yeah. have people that are in uh, just relationships, man-woman relationships or just mm -hmm. friendships mm -hmm. and things that, nature that are challenged in this area and they're finding it difficult for them to be able to manage both. You know, how can I show up for my friend's birthday party or for her children's birthday party or ballet when I'm dealing with depression or mm -hmm. I'm dealing with anxiety or I'm not at my best? How do I how do I show up, you know, at, at the girls day, right? Dinner or girls day brunch when I just got finished crying my eyes out because I'm having identity issues. Like how yeah. do we still do that? And these are things that we are struggling with. These are things that we are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And we're not talking about it enough. And I know that in particularly the black community, there's a stigma when it comes to mental health, when mm -hmm. you talk about mental health or anxiety or depression. I know we're talking about it more, but it's still a negative stigma. It's still a disparity in the black community when yes. it comes to mental health. I know growing up, I knew a lot of people that had something, something was wrong, right? I knew mm -hmm. something was off with the person, <laughs> but I didn't know what it was. I couldn't right. identify with it now knowing what I know, having the education, having the knowledge, having the experience, I understand that there was some areas in their life that they were struggling with, but back then I did not know. So mm -hmm. just tell us just a little bit about you, anything more you want to share, and just a little bit about your story so we can just kind of get into this dialogue uh, on this evening. And I'm going yeah. to remove myself so you can have the screen. Amen. Well, I, what I love about living <laughs> is that we're constantly evolving and we're always going to be evolving. And what I've you know, been learning over these last few weeks and over these last few months about myself is that it's okay to still be growing and it's okay to still be evolving. But most importantly, it's okay to not have it all together. And one thing that is really ministering to my soul and has been for the past however many weeks I've been listening to the audiobook is Mrs. Uh, Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. Oh, I wish I had it with me. I think I let um, it's somewhere in here. But I highly, highly encourage you to read the book, get the audio if you haven't done so already. For me, God speaks to me simply, right? So he'll use these words, catch your phrases. Um, and so for me, before I even picked up, picked up the book, the title in itself spoke to my spirit, Becoming. And so what that did for me was allow me to take a deep breath. And it gave me the permission to continue to become who God has called me to be. So it doesn't matter um, what platform I'm on. It doesn't matter who I teach or who I coach or where I work or who I serve or who I serve under or who serves me. I am becoming. I am still working on me. I am human. I am flawed. And guess what? God loves me still the same. And that's how um, that's how great our God is, because even in our imperfection, he loves us. And so what I want to say to you today, if you don't hear nothing else that Trell and I are going to talk about over the next few moments, hear that it is OK to become. It is OK to continue to progress. It's OK to not have arrived, to still have flaws, to not be where you want to be in life. Come on. We all have our own expectations on where we were supposed to be and where we were supposed to, and who we were supposed to be with and, and everything. But God has given us grace because we need it. <laughs> He's given us grace because we need it. And so um, that 
that book is a blessing to me. It is, it is just, it's, it's, it, well, one, it makes, it feels like she's talking to you on a couch, like it's your girlfriend, right? So it just, it makes you relax. But two, again, it just gives you the permission to continue to progress and to continue to evolve and not have it all together. Even if you are or were the first lady of the United States, even if you have degree after degree, even if you're married with the one whom you love and whom you adore, even if you serve God every day, there is something that we all still are striving to do. And I just want to give you permission tonight that it's okay not to be um, all mentally together. It's okay not to be all emotionally together. Um, but for me and my story, all I know is that my life got better as soon as I connected with God. <laughs> as soon as I connected with him um, and not just uh, connected with him, stay connected with him, walked with him, stay in step in the spirit like the like scripture tells us. And so when I grabbed a hold of Jesus, my life just got better and it gets better every day. And even when I feel that overwhelm trying to creep in, right, I, I have to just pause and I have to get in his presence because in the presence is the fullness of joy. And I mean that it's not, um, you know, this whole this whole quarantine has taught us so much about church. OK, you can have church. I feel you right now. Holy Spirit, you can have church wherever you are. You don't have to be in no four buildings. I'm telling you, I have the best worship experience in my car on my hour drive to work. OK, so what you need to do when you feel that thing coming, because something's going to try to come and get you as soon as we get off the thing tonight, I'm going to try to come and get you. you got to press into the presence of the Lord. And I'm telling you, a pain, everything, you know, discomfort everything has to flee when you're when you're before him and so that's what we need to work on and, and just continue to be in his presence my sisters <laughs> the, the, wow 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 you said so many things you guys if you hey if you're listening if anything that Khadija said resonated with you please share 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 this broadcast I did share it on my page I did share it on uh, my personal page and also my public page. Something mm -hmm. you said, you said a lot of good things, but something you said about becoming. And mm -hmm. I believe that because there is so much pressure, mm -hmm. we have so much pressure. We're living in a day and age of social media. And, you mm -hmm. know, some people can say, oh, social media don't bother me. Well, you know, all of us are on social media. Most of us are on social media, right? Our millennials, our exennials, our baby <laughs> boomers, everybody's on social media. Right. And it's, it's like we're using the platform almost to be validated in, in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're looking for the likes, we're looking for the love, we're doing things to get mm -hmm. noticed, to get, like, mm -hmm. you know, people can argue with me all day long, but the purpose you post on social media is to get a response. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if I'm posting on social media, I'm posting because I want a reaction. Mm -hmm. And then we have to ask ourselves, like we're using the platform, I right? want the reaction. Why do I need the reaction? What is it about me showing up and somebody liking my post or loving my post or, or 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 responding to my post? What is it about me? And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing because we have, I believe, it's an innate ability to just want to be validated. I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing. However, mm -hmm. when we get to the point where we're looking at that for that validation, and many of us that are leaders, um, and uh, in, in our own way and in our own right, mm -hmm. and we're trying to make an impact in the earth and we're looking at sister so-and-so over here mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. like she's doing extremely well but here we are still struggling right or what, what it seems like right we've been doing whatever we've been doing for the last five or ten years and it seems like there is no um there's no gusto to behind what yeah. we're doing you know we're full of motivation we're full of inspiration we love mm -hmm. jesus but it just seems like we're in a stuck place so that in itself can cause a level of comparison that in mm -hmm. itself can cause a level of uh, competition you know i want to you know let me compete let me do something different let me do more yes. uh, so better than her or better than them or better than you know and things of that nature so we just live in this place where social media is really uh guarding our our lives yes and everything that we do is focused around presenting um showing up being the boss making boss moves and you're constantly hearing these things but yet you're still trying to stay in your lane and not become overwhelmed so i think social media puts a lot of pressure 
when it comes to the mental health and when it comes to becoming. And we're not comfortable in just becoming and going at our own pace and doing, you know, what's good for us or what's right for us because we're constantly comparing and constantly operating in this place of jealousy or even envy or even covetousness. Mm -hmm. You really want to be honest. Right. That just puts a lot of pressure. It does. And, you know, I, I totally agree with you in terms of, I, but I definitely believe social media in itself is one reason why anxiety, why depression is at a high, right? Because we don't know how to disconnect. It's a time and a place for everything. It's a time for you to watch the news about COVID-19. It's a time for you to turn it off. It's a time for you to be connected and 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 use uh, social media as a platform to inspire or to talk about your business or to catch up with friends and family. But then there's a time to disconnect. And I think we don't always understand the importance of disconnecting. And one of the things that, you know, the Lord has been dealing with me on is why is his stamp of approval? Why is that not enough? Why do I need the approval of anybody? If God has approved me, if God has ordained me, if God has said yes, <laughs> I mean, I've seen things. That's why scripture is so real to me. I've seen God open doors for me that that man tried to shut. And I've seen them. I mean, literally, I roll up to banks, lights out, people walking out, going to their car, and they go back and the lights go on because that's the God we serve. So if this God, this great God has already approved you, Troy, and everybody watching, he's approved me. Why is he not enough? And that's the question that we have to ask. Well, why am I comparing with such and such? Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God made me in his image. Why am I not enough? And I think sometimes we have to ask ourselves these hard questions. Well, where did that where did that spirit of rejection come from? You know, you got to spend time with yourself to know to know thyself. <laughs> and so getting with God and getting with your journal and asking yourself, you know what, God, why am I on social media uh, 10 hours out of the 24 hours? Why am I looking at other people's lives? Why is my life not enough? You know, so asking those questions, but definitely true. I do agree um, that social media plays a heavy part and um, creating that, uh, that jealousy, that envy, that comparison spirit that we just need to rebuke and bind. <laughs> Because God made you so unique and so beautiful in your skin and your image and with your gifts, with your talent, that you don't have to be me because you got a whole lane of your own, boo. So you don't have to want to be in my lane and you don't have to compare yourself to me. That's why personally, I just I don't really believe in competition. I just don't. I just feel like we can collaborate when God says so. I mean, if you look on any major highway, any major street, there's gas stations among gas stations among gas station. They're not closing doors because there's another gas station across the street. So your business, your ministry, your book, your whatever God has gifted you with will thrive if you keep him at the center and not everybody else's opinion. You on mute, Cheryl. I can't hear you. <laughs> I was saying something when you were saying self-love is important. That's exactly right. When you were saying, you know, when I know who I am, I don't have to look to other people. So that there lies make me believe that there is also an underlying issue when it comes to identity in itself. Mm -hmm. And my niece, uh, Tierra Griffin, is currently, I think today is her last day of her access granted. And today they were talking about identity and knowing who your identity is in Christ. And what I found mm -hmm. to be true is that when there is um, uh, when there is some doubt about who you are, yeah. then that comes to play. You know, mm -hmm. so many people grew up in homes. And I, 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 I'm going to say this. This is not my mantra, but it's just true. Mm -hmm. Fatherless homes, you know, absent mm -hmm. parents, uh, you know, they weren't able to uh, be identified as children. They weren't able to be validated. And that's one reason why parents exist. You know, parents are the first peer of individuals that tell you who you are. 
Mm-hmm. They establish you, they cultivate you, they nurture you. And although many of us may have grow, grown up in the two parent homes or may have had a strong one parent, you know, some things were missing, the beat was missing. So then you go, you grow up and you go out and you go into the world and you're looking to the world for validation and for substance and, and all of that stuff. And then you grow up to be an adult and you get into business and you get into ministry and you're trying to do business and ministry well, but then you're still finding that there are some identity issues. And I can just be honest, when I first got married, I had identity issues uh, for the very fact that I had a father that was there in the home financially and physically present, but emotionally unavailable. And there are a lot of things that were missing when it came to, came to, to the validation part. So I found myself in toxic relationships or just finding something to do pretty much. Uh, because I wanted that uh, that validation. I wasn't a people pleaser, but I did need validation uh, mm-hmm. and to f- figure out who I was. But then when I got married, that still was an issue when it came to identity. It still was an issue when it came to rejection more so because there's abandonment. And then anytime you experience abandonment, you automatically experience a level of rejection. So mm-hmm. those were things that I struggled with. And all of that, like, you know, is in... Co- um, cohesiveness together, if you would, it mm-hmm. all goes up. So yeah, it, it makes me think that there's a level. What do you guys think? There's a level, and I see self love is important, and seeing some comments here. But what do you guys think? Comment and let us know. Yeah, and I, you know, the enemy is so crafty, and y'all, I'm still trying to create this watch party. So somebody can go ahead and help me create. I did share it on my page, um, but I'm going to work this out. But let me see if I can share the, the, the enemy is so crafty with having us to think that we didn't or we don't have enough. And so even with similarly, I grew up in a single parent home. My father um, was around, is around, but not in the capacity in which I desired. Right. So that always that always um, leaves you with a void. But one thing I remember, because my father is a man of God, and he actually is the one who introduced me to Christ. So you can blame him for my craziness in the book. <laughs> but one thing I said, or I remember him saying to me, because my uh, grad school, my boyfriend in grad school at the time re- recognized that I had some anger issues. And, you know, the way I dealt with the men was a little rough around the edges. And so he was honest with my dad and he shared this with him. And so my dad, um, like a man, would and should apologize. But one thing he said was, um, even when I wasn't there, God always was. Mm -hmm. And so that always sticks with me because even, even now at 36, whatever I thought I missed, God always filled the gap. Like he always had grace to fill the gap. So I think my point, I have took this off my wall because I wanted to show this, that we just really need to count our blessings, because even if there's something we don't have, I guarantee you that God has given you something else to fill the gap. And there's no replacing. Right. I mean, people have lost parents to death and have gone on to be with the Lord, but God will still fill the gap with someone else. And so even in my father in law now, I mean, he loves me. I'll be I'm always teased like he he prefers me over his son. Okay. Mm -hmm. So even now, even the way that we interact is something that I didn't have growing up. Mm. And so God's still looking out for me, still giving me those things that I I thought I needed. Right. And so even with godparents and aunties and 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 when we step in for nieces and nephews and your neighbor's child and and just however you fill in the gap in your community or in your business, um, just recognize that there God will always supply the need. It may not be how we thought it should have come. Of course, naturally we want our parents to be there. Naturally we want love from them, but guess what God did? He gave you someone else who would give you that love that maybe that person couldn't give. And so it's up to us to extend that same grace. I was just speaking to one of my clients about this a few weeks ago. He's um, shared the same thing, but from his mom. So from a different standpoint, his mom was always in and out of jail and he just missed that mom's love. But I said, you know what? Don't hold her to that because she couldn't give you what she never received. Mm 
So we can't hold people accountable for what they never got, right? All we can do is extend the same grace that God gives us daily, child, because I need grace every day. Yes. So we extend that same grace, but recognize the things that, you know what, I didn't have this, I don't have this, but I sure do have this, and I'm grateful, God, and I thank you for it. And so I just think as we start to thank him, I'm telling you, when I start to thank him, I just forget all the things I don't have and all the things that are on my to-do list and the expectation list. Um, but when we thank him, it, it really erases and you it helps you to forget the things that you don't have. Mm. And I want to say that is also true. You know, thank him for that and, and being able to identify your uh, identity in mm -hmm. him. And also, you know, being able to thank him and as far as your mental wellness is concerned, because yes. when you look at the identity and when you look at okay, my parents weren't there, my mom, my dad, or right. you know, one young lady said, I didn't know who I was when I got married at 21 years old and I found my identity in my husband and my children. Mm -hmm. And you know, all of that too can just take a toll on the, I'm gonna go back to the becoming part mm -hmm. of who you are. So mm -hmm. when we thank him, we have to have a relationship with him. That's my point I'm trying to get to. Yeah. <laughs> we're thanking him. We yeah. have to know the God we're thanking. Mm -hmm. And too often, you know, we have a surface level relationship mm -hmm. with God and not that you got to be all deep and wonderful and walk around in the Bible. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, the word of God tells us that we are to live a holy, righteous life just simply means set apart. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing grand. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we're not doing that and we're not in the word and we're not looking in the word to identify that we will never get to that point. And that even, that's even true when it comes to mental health. I'm gonna have several scriptures I'll share later when it comes to that. So when we don't understand the God we're thinking or the God that we're serving or the God we say that we serve, mm -hmm. we cannot access the benefits that he has. Mm -hmm. This morning I prayed about the power of God and I prayed um, about the two types of power in, in the Greek, uh, the Kratos and the Ischios power. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but one power is an eruptive power. It's a demonstrative power. It's a tangible, visible power, external power, mm -hmm. where the second power is muscular, able, mighty power. It's the power that backs the Kratos power. And I prayed about power squared. So when we don't understand the amount of power that is operating in our lives, not mm -hmm. only do we not know what our identity is, we also will struggle with mental illness. And yes. I know that is scientific. I know that some is, it's not a gene per se, but there is some, you know, if the other one in your family struggle with depression, it can mm -hmm. pass down to you, not necessarily a gene, though there's no scientific evidence regarding that. Uh, however, I do know that circumstances can bring that on. I do know also that certain health issues can bring that on, certain medications mm -hmm. can bring that on. There's so many variables, right? So many variables. But even with that, even with that, understanding who God is and understanding how who his, uh, his word and asking him to give you insight and foresight. Because when I was struggling with that anxiety, y'all, I started praying. Mm -hmm. I went to a therapist, but I'm like, God, what is going on? Like, what? I'm, I'm, I'm filled with fear. Mm -hmm. Like literally, Katisha, I thought I was dying like mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I was having a stroke, a heart attack, an aneurysm, all at the same time. Mm -hmm. It was a scary thing. I mm -hmm. remember getting up, holding my chest and telling my husband, we got to go to the doctor. And then I thought it was something spiritual. I was like in this really weird place. I'm like, oh, God, take me deeper. And I believe it was a part of that. And I didn't understand what was going on because he did open up some supernatural things. And that scared me mm. because things were going on that I didn't have control over. I was seeing things mm -hmm. spiritually. I was experiencing things in my body. I was experiencing things around me that I could not understand, which brought fear. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because I needed to go deeper in the word. I'm just going to be very transparent right about now. God kept telling me, start studying my word. I need, matter of fact, I have it in my phone and I have it in my phone. So I'm going to look at it every single day so I can, so I can do that. It says, remember what I told you. Mm. And I had it um, saved like every week. Remember what I told you or something to that. Remember what God keeps saying. I'm going to see if y'all can see that. Can y'all see that? Hold on, where's my camera? Can y'all see that? Mm-hmm. 
Y'all see that? Remember what God keeps saying, get in the word, read, if nothing else. You hear me? So he keeps reminding me, even today, because he's stretching me, mm -hmm. taking me in a place that I've never been before. Mm -hmm. and he wants me to be able to expound and explain his word in a way that has not been explained before. And I'm coming and I'm coming home with y'all with this, y'all. But in order for me to be able to do that, my point is that I have to understand his word. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know who your I know what your identity is. Not only do you have to go to church, church is a building. We understand that. We understand that uh, you know, we are to gather as a collective body. Mm -hmm. But you have to know who he is. If you're challenged with mental health issues, you have to know who he is because not only can he deliver you from mental health, he can set you free to where mm -hmm. that's never, ever an issue. I can honestly say today that my anxiety no longer controls me. I know when, it, when it's happening, why it's happening. I know my triggers. I know how to manage my uh, external fa factors and uh, exterior factors and all of those things. I, I am in, in control. The mm -hmm. God is in control, I'm going to say it like that. Yeah. So that's, that's my point, y'all. <laughs> You 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 definitely said a mouthful, girl. You got me itching my head right here. Um, but you know, for me, I definitely agree that God wants to take me deeper. That is a stretch for me because I'm I'm a simplistic I'm a simplistic person. So I really just take the Holy Spirit at His word. You know, I was just sharing with someone earlier how sometimes when I wake up, you know, God will give me words. And I know it's him when it's a word that I don't know the meaning of. <laughs> so I have to go and look in the dictionary. Um, but God is call, calling us to go deeper, right? And deeper is whatever it is for you, because God knows where you're at in the, in the, in the waves and the water of things. He knows if you're at, you know, in level two or if you're three feet or four, five, six, he knows what deeper is. And so, you know, you know what deeper is for you as well. Um, but he is challenging me right now to rise early, earlier, <laughs> um, you know, and I'm looking at him and he looking at me like, <laughs> you know, but it's that early morning prayer that really where I can take my time because he knows I just like to take my time. I don't want to be rushing. I'm not. And people know me. I've always been blessed. Like God has always been giving me grace with my job. So I'm going to be late because I'm going if I have to be because I'm going to spend my time with the Lord first. And so um, but he wants me to even get up earlier. I definitely believe he's trying to prepare me for some children because I need to be up while they sleep and so I can do my thing because he knows that my time with him, I'm not willing to give that up for anybody. <laughs> so I have to learn to do the three or four o'clocks because that's the time when everybody else is asleep. Mm -hmm. I haven't mastered it yet. Um, we, we still work in progress as it relates to that thing. But um the thing is, he'll give me scriptures. And so going back to your point about knowing the word and really the word that God tells us that our word is hidden in our heart. Mm -hmm. Because I, I promise you, I don't know how these scriptures be coming to be coming to my, my spirit. I'm like, they, they were hidden. Your subconscious. <laughs> because we, he knew us in our womb now and in, in our mother's womb. So he was giving us all that. We got all these heavenly downloads before we even got here. So now he's just bringing those things back to remembrance. But one scripture that's coming to mind right now, because that fear thing has been trying to get me to. Um, and that's the, that um, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love and that of a sound mm -hmm. mind. And so for those of you struggling with um, having that sound mind, just keep saying that until you believe it, because eventually you're going to believe the thing that you're saying, because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So if you keep just saying it, I'm telling you, uh, there's a, um, do I have it with me? Oh yeah, I do. One of my little declarations that I got from uh, Bill Winston. And I'm telling you every morning, I don't always feel like saying this long thing because it's long, but I got to keep saying it. Even if I don't feel like it, because eventually I'm, I'm, I'm it's going to manifest. So you just got to keep repeating and now there's no excuses because we have Google. So if you don't even know a scripture, you can Google mm. one and you can stand on that. And that's what we have to do. Stand on the word of God. Um, and so what I do is I just repeat it until I feel release in my spirit. 
and then I'll go on to something else. And if there's something else that God needs me to stand on, I'll repeat that scripture until I feel released. But I'm glad that you shared your story because I feel like something's been going on with me too, girl. I'm like, why am I waking up feeling like this? Mm -hmm. And I just can't, you can't really pinpoint it. I mean, I know I got a lot going on, but I'm like, what is this in my chest though? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, um, you know, God is, he's able. That's all I know. I know he's able and I know that he, he wants us to trust him and anything that he takes from you. Um, it's not that he's doing it because he is just a bad parent. He's doing it because he, he knows the blessing of, he, he wants to get something else to you. Um, and so if he's telling you to get up early, he's not really taking your sleep away. He just knows that it's better to be to be in his presence. He knows that that's better for you. If he's changing your diet, I know he changed your diet and he's been changing mine. We've been doing this dance girl forever. It feels like, but he had to, help me realize, he had to help me realize, I know your future. So right. I'm not taking it from you because I, I, I want to take something from you. I'm trying to give you long life, girl. I'm trying to do all these things that you know nothing about. And he knows what the enemy has in store for us. You know what I mean? So um, ladies, if you can't do nothing else, get you a little scripture that you can stand on and just repeat that thing. I'm telling you, that thing will see and, and just get right, right on down with your spirit. And you'd be like, dang, I'm delivered from this thing. And you didn't even have to go get no oil for that. You just had uh -huh. to work out. <laughs> and to that point, even with, uh, you know, getting the scripture and standing on the scripture, I just want to go back to, you know, the word of God tells us in Philippians 2 and 5 to let this mind mm -hmm. be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we know that an idle mind is a devil's workshop, that he looks for opportunities to come in. So when things are going on in our marriage, when things are going on in our life, when things are going on with our money, when things are going on with our job, mm -hmm. uh, when things are going on internally, he looks for those opportunities. So to the point of standing on the word of God. Mm -hmm. And we understand that if you need professional help, then definitely get that because mm -hmm. I'm a strong advocate mm -hmm. of professional assistance, professional help, psychiatry and psychology. Mm -hmm. So definitely get that. However, in, in, in conjunction with that, Mm -hmm. making sure that you are standing on the word of God. If you don't, you know, one of my favorite scriptures, so I got 2,380 steps over <laughs> my 10,000 steps. If you're standing on the word and this was one of my scriptures, like I said, I prayed and I, I stood on the word of God. I would go in my prayer closet and even in the prayer closet, Khadijah was having anxiety mm -hmm. attacks and things of that nature. But I just stood on the word of God when I thought something was happening to me, you know, I would get up and breathe hard. But the word says when the righteous cry for help, my God, the Lord hears and deliver them out of all of their yes. troubles. The Lord is near to mm -hmm. the brokenhearted and saves a crushing spirit. Mm. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all of his bones and not one of them were broken according to Psalms 34, 17 and 20. When we know that when we cry out, mm -hmm. even if we're dealing with anxiety, depression or other clinical uh, mental illnesses or things that may not have, we may not have been diagnosed with. I wasn't diagnosed with anxiety. I diagnosed myself because I know that's what it was, but I didn't get a diagnos diagnostic uh, mm -hmm. from a physician, but I knew what it was, right? Because God revealed it to me like, okay, daughter, this is what's going on. So even when you're dealing with that thing, you can cry out for God's help. And the scripture I stood on, another scripture I stood on was Philippians 4, 6, and 7, where it says, do not be anxious about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, that word anxious is do not be worried. Mm -hmm. You can't be worried about what's going on. Another scripture, I believe in Matthew or Mark, it talks about, don't worry about what are you going to eat? Mm -hmm. What are you going to drink? Mm -hmm. What are you going to wear? You know, if a man being evil know how to give good gifts to his children, how much more does God know how to give good gifts to you? Yes. So speeches about anything, but by in everything, by prayer and supplication, that word supplication is with request. Make your petition known unto God. What is it mm -hmm. that you need? What is it that you're asking me for? He tells us to come to him. You know, you could come to him and lay your burdens to him. First Peter 5 tells us to cast all of our cares. That word cares is worry, anxieties, our fears on him, for he cared for us. Yes. So when we know that and we believe that and we're constantly standing on that, there is no devil in hell that will be able to defeat us. 
Yes. I don't care what's going on mm -hmm. in your marriage. I don't care if you're on the brink of divorce. I don't care if you're constantly in conflict. When you stand on the word and listen now, when we stand on the word, we also have to apply the word. So mm -hmm. when the word is applicable, that means that the word is activated in our lives and we can carry out what the scriptures are saying to us. So when we ask the question, can you manage marriage and mental health? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. However, there's a part that you must play mm -hmm. a spiritual part and a natural part to every spiritual thing. There's a natural application to every natural application. There's a spiritual application. So we're living in both realms. We are mm -hmm. a natural. We are a spiritual being living in a natural body and living in a natural world. And we have spiritual insight. And because we have spiritual insight, there is nothing that we have to struggle with. You know, I think about, I think it was King, was it King Hezekiah who lost his mind and he prayed or, or someone prayed on his behalf? I want to say it was King Hezekiah who lost his mind and somebody prayed on his behalf. Let me find it mm -hmm. Hold on. right now. It was Hezekiah or I don't think it was Nebuchadnezzar. I want to say it was King Hezekiah. You Bible scholars, help me out. Lost his mind. And let's see. Girl, I was about to say Saul. <laughs> Uh, in those days, Hezekiah became mortally ill. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order. You shall die and not live. Then he turned his face to the well and prayed to oh, the Lord. It, where he extended his life for 15 years? That's when he was sick. But there was a time. There was another scripture changed his mind. Who lost their mind? Any of my Bible scholars know? Uh, I think it may. Hold on, let me see. Was he Nebuchadnezzar? I think so. Hold on. Now I gotta find out. I lost his grip. I know David. You guys know David suffered with depression and things of that nature. But there was somebody who lost their mind, and God restored their mind. I remember reading that scripture, and I didn't even know that until I read it, and I was like, "What?" So even in that. Mm -hmm. Even if, that, if you feel like I'm gonna have to find it, and I'll I'll share with you guys whenever I find it. Even if you're feeling like mentally you're not there, and mm -hmm. you feel things are happening to you, God can restore you from that place. Mm -hmm. He will restore you from that place because He is a good, good God, and mm -hmm. He is a a God who restores. He's a, a God who redeems. He is a God who wants to be glorified. So in him being glorified, he will do that on your behalf. Mm -hmm. And we have to know that. We see a king. Oh, my son, I have a name. Let's see. So when we come to chapter two, we see a king who completely lost his grip, mentally speaking. Who was that king? Saul so would be admitted by to a mental hospital for what? Elias. I mean, the only thing that comes to mind was Saul. When remember David was playing the leery. But I thought it was another king. It might have been Saul. Okay. It might have been Saul, though. And I know he prayed or mm -hmm. someone prayed in his mind got restored. That was my point. Anyway, I never wow. thought I needed professional counseling. Let me see what she said. So but, Erica said, I never thought I needed professional counseling because blacks don't gravitate to that kind of help. Right. But when I lost my parents in 16, my, both my parents in 16 months, my parent, my parent in 16 months. My marriage had a roadblock. God stood up on the spiritual manifest. Absolutely. Amen. And Erica, you make a good point because whether you black or, or Hispanic or Asian women, <laughs> we need to be okay with asking mm -hmm. for help. Okay. We do not have to wear the S on our chest. And just in my private, you know, my prayer time the other day, I'm, I'm like, Lord, I, I felt like I needed some extra and 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 the Holy Spirit said, "Well, call on your warriors. Call on some people who can pray in these specific areas." And Trail was one of those. And and so I shoot right in the midst. Because as soon as God gave me something like that, I want to do it immediately. And so I had a few people just praying and interceding with me. And uh, before you know it, the thing, the spirit is lifted. And mm -hmm. so when you need help, ask for it. I love it. And James, where it talks about, I think it's James one and five, where it talks about when you need wisdom ask for it and god who gives it will give it to you liberally yes. and so if you need some help 
you better ask. I don't care what type of help it is. If you need somebody to pray, if you need groceries, if you need a light bill paid, I mean, you have to ask for the help. A closed mouth will not get fed. <laughs> and so it's okay because the thing is, God won't flip that thing so quick that you're going to be on the giving need. You know what I mean? Sometimes he just has to humble us. The word tells us that he is, he humbles those before he exalts. So mm-hmm. we have to be um, humble enough to know, you know what? God, I don't know how this is going to get met. I don't know how this bill. I don't know how I'm going to have gas. I remember there was some years ago, child, I would pray. I mean, I got faith that can move mountains. So I'd be praying my way to work. I ain't have no gas in my car. And I'm just, and you know, and God will, he'll honor your faith. But then I'm like, well, how am I going to get home? Let me text my sister and see if she can. They didn't have cash at back then. So I don't know what I was using. But the point is, you got to help. You got to ask for help sometimes. And it's not. And, and don't worry about, again, what people think of you. Mm-mm. You better hang that up real quick in the closet because that will keep you stuck so long. So if you need professional counseling like Miss um, Timmons, if you need um, just a word of wisdom, if you're not sure if you're about to make a business decision or, or a business purchase or if anything, God, show me who I can talk to regarding this thing. So God always has uh, the person or the persons that can provide the help. It's just a matter of us being honest with ourselves on saying, you know what? I can't do this thing by myself. I can't carry this load by myself. Right. Because in order for us to be impactful and effective, we need soundness. <laughs> I mean, period, dot. So if you are in that place and you're on here tonight and you know you've been experiencing some challenges, some mm-hmm. mental challenges, mm-hmm. and you have uh, feared getting that help or you didn't know what to ask for or you felt shame, and I bind that spirit of shame and I loose it from you right now in the name of Jesus, because that's yes. something else in the black community that we struggle with so much shame uh, and guilt. Guilt is I did something wrong. Shame is I am wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we struggle with as a people, as a black community. And I just, I just, you know, speak to you on tonight to tell you to be free mm-hmm. from that spirit and to get that help you need. And in closing, because you just, I'm going to just share, I'll keep talking, but I want you to just give three tips after I finish of what, individuals can do if they are in a place where they are managing marriage and mental health. Um, Mm -hmm. So just kind of think about that. uh, And as we wrap up here, so you guys, what I want to just say, it's important that you understand the God that you serve and you understand the power Mm -hmm. that he possessed and understand the power that he placed on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that lives on the inside of you. Another version says the same spirit (laughs) that raised Jesus from the dead Mm -hmm. is the same spirit that lives on the inside of you. As I was praying this morning, I talked about how eruptive that power was. So the point, Khadijah, the guards that were standing in the front of the tomb, Mm -hmm. not only cause the soldiers to faint, but also cause the soldiers to crumble. And then the other soldiers laid prostrate and were paralyzed until after the resurrection was over. Now that same power lives on the inside of you. So you mean to tell me with the stroke of God's one arm that he can part the Red Sea He cannot deliver you from a mental illness. He cannot help you to cope with life. He cannot help you to restore your mind, your thinking, your being. That one one arm, that one stroke, that one strike, as I was praying this morning, that's all it takes. So understand what power you possess and learn how to apply the power when the pressure comes, when the mental pressure, when that pressure came on me and I was struggling with that thing and I would be driving because I was driving from Charleston to DC one day. And this is right after I had an episode, but it was like a couple of days after. And I thought I was fine. And Lord knows I began to drive and I automatically began to feel overwhelmingly scared fear just catapulted this just paralyzed me and came over me and I'm driving I'm, I'm scared to drive and everything is triggering me the cars 
beside me are triggering me. I feel like I'm going to fall out. I felt like, you know, I was going to die. Just, that's what anxiety feels like. It feels like you're going to die. I called my husband and I began to tell my husband, I'm like, honey, I'll know what's going on. I cannot drive. I, I cannot make it. Something's wrong. I, I, can, I can't keep going. He says, pull over to the nearest gas station and just breathe. Because that's what my therapist told me. She said, breathe. Just breathe. Begin to pray, begin to affirm. And that's exactly what I did. But I ended up turning back. I was maybe an hour, an hour maybe two hours out mm. of Charleston. I didn't go back to D.C., come back mm. to D.C. I turned back and went back to Charleston because I was so scared gear mm. so just imagine this is a, this is two years ago so this is not that long ago y'all so just imagine somebody like me you guys see me doing ministry you see me praying you see me have my wives who win community you see all these things and people have this uh, assumption of who they think you are or mm. whatever i don't know um but yet i was dealing with that and i was still trying to show up because y'all didn't miss a beat I was still on live. I was still showing up for my community. I may have slacked off a bit, but I was still going hard. I was still going strong. And here I was at the hospital every other day because I was having an anxiety attack and I thought I was dying. Here I was walking outside of my my front door and on the phone with my husband because he was out of town and telling him I need to call the ambulance to come and get me. And I did. And they came and picked me up and mm -hmm. took me to the hospital just to say nothing was wrong. And mm -hmm. I was dealing with anxiety. So you guys just don't know. I had to stand on the power of God. I had to say, God, this thing will not defeat me. This mm -hmm. thing will not overwhelm me. This mm -hmm. thing will not impact my marriage. Because just imagine I'm in the bed. My husband's in the bed. I'm jumping up, you know, holding my chest and, and yelling and screaming because I don't know what's wrong. Something's going on, mm -hmm. you know. With me in me i don't have any control over this thing mm -hmm. that's scary y'all mm -hmm. i'm not easily scared mm -hmm. that's scary yes driving out of town having anxiety attacks driving from philadelphia to dc flow bone full blown anxiety attack people in the car with me but i'm not saying anything because i don't want to scare them i know what's going on and i'm trying to keep it all together so to khadija's point we don't have to keep it all together. I saw it hot, hot help. Now, there's sometimes I'm translucent and then sometimes I'm transparent. Sometimes I share, but I don't share all because all does not need to be shared. I do not mm -hmm. need to be shared at that mm -hmm. moment, right? Mm -hmm. So in that moment, no, I'm not sharing, but I'm sharing with you guys now. And I'm telling you now that I am in a great place. Now I understand the, 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 the purpose of it all. Now I understand how to manage. Now my husband understands. Now, you know, I can be, and I was then open, mm -hmm. honest, and transparent with him and him, you know, being the mm -hmm. considerate and kind man that he is mm -hmm. was there for me and didn't want to leave me alone. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of those things, all of those things we have to consider. So to that point, love you too, sweetheart, to that point, go ahead, Khadija. <laughs> You're yeah. young. <laughs> <So> me, <laughs> Dada. I saw you. I said, "Look, you're young." Yeah, I don't think I can because I'm like, I'm like, I got another hour left. But <laughs> um, the thing is, we have to acknowledge when something's going on, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's point number one. Acknowledge, I don't have it all together. I need help <laughs> and literally be okay with it. Be okay with it. Um, the other thing that we have to do as a community, as women, is really pause. The mm -hmm. Bible tells us about a Sabbath rest. Mm -hmm. And um, it's important to enter into that rest. You know, I, I believe, you know, right now they, they call us in a pandemic, a crisis. It's a pause. God has intentionally paused the whole world because we were go, all going too fast and too crazy too soon. You know, we're losing sight of family. We're losing sight of fellowship. We're losing sight of things that are important. And so it was really important for us to have um, intentional times where we pause. Um, for me, periodically, 
baths work for me. Um, shower time. I love my shower time. I've always been one who takes long showers because that's that's my that's my reflection time. That's where God gives me my ideas. That's where we commune. And it's funny because right before the COVID, I had just invested in um, a membership at Massage Envy, mm. and then and then COVID came, so you know they were shut down. So I haven't been able to go. But I was looking forward to treating myself once a month to a massage because we have to pause. We have to enter into that rest that God calls us to enter into because we just so used to going, 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 going. It's hamster real. And that leaves you empty and leaving and giving from an empty place, which how can you give from an empty cup? You have nothing to give. So acknowledge when something is wrong. Pause. Take that time. If you've got children, ask somebody to come over watch my kids for two hours while I take a bath with some candles. Help me to relax. You know, we need that relaxation, that rest. Um, and three, I would just say get the help. Get the help. <laughs> Whatever that is, you know, and, and make sure um, Trell is really good at this with holding people accountable. So make sure you have someone that will hold you accountable. If you said you're going to um, lose weight, then go and get you a little coach. Mm -hmm. If you said you're going to go to the gym once the gym's open back up, you know, go on and get you a little trainer. Whatever you said you was going to do, have somebody hold you to your word because that's all you got. And that's what we got from God. And that's what we stand on. We stand on his word and we know that he is consistent. He's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And so that's what I'm praying for myself and for you, that we will be as consistent as God is with us. So with the things that you want to do in your life, if you want to achieve home ownership, if you want to um, start a business, if you want to just be mentally clear and if you just want to be the other day, <laughs> God was like, just be nice to your husband. Just be nice. You're nice to everybody else. So I just need to be nice. Whatever you want to be, boo, <laughs> have somebody help you hold you accountable to that thing. And and don't, um, and I just throw this one in there for free, don't overthink. My mother-in-law uh, did a Bible study on our, um, on our prayer call. We have a prayer call every Wednesday at 6 a.m. Man, this thing was probably two years ago. That word still resonates with me. Overthink. We overthink, we out talk, we do all these things. Do not overthink or underestimate the power of God. God's instructions are actually very simple <laughs> if we just follow them, but we overthink them. So um, my prayer is that you got something out of this thing tonight. I know you did because um, Trail was talking good. Look, I got to go back and I got to watch this for myself. <laughs> so um, make sure you share this. You know, this is good nuggets that that trails given out every what is it every Friday for the month of May. Yeah, share it with somebody. Somebody may be on date night or maybe at work, but make sure that they watch the replay. Amen. Um, because they they're going to be blessed. Amen. Praise God. This has definitely been a yummy conversation, and <laughs> thank you so much, Khadija, for just being a part and saying yes. Mm -hmm. I sent out a message, and she was like, "Yeah, this is God." So. <laughs> Definitely. I appreciate that. Um, your openness, your willingness, your transparency. Definitely appreciate that. And you've been on other platforms we've had. And of course, you'll be on again. So if you guys want to get in touch with the Khadija Carol, just meet her at KhadijaCarol.com. She has a place there. You can put in your information and she'll, uh, you know, you'll be a part of her community and things of that nature. She's a great person to connect with, to grow with, uh, to expound with. Definitely. Thank you, Erica. Appreciate it. Thank you, Latasha. Thank you all that are watching. Thank you all that are watching the replay. Listen, we are here every Friday at 8 p.m. And you guys know Monday through Friday, uh, 5.30 a.m., we're praying. 5.30 a.m., Monday through Friday, we're praying on various platforms. So Mondays is here, but I normally share every single day. And I normally pray through two to three times a week. So definitely meet us there. I post them all here. If you're following me anywhere, you'll see what's happening. And I and I just don't want you guys to miss the move. Mm. Don't miss the move of God. Like Khadija said, we are in a divine pause. Miko was talking about that too. And I don't want y'all to miss the move mm -hmm. of God. 
because after this, like even now, like I don't feel like 2020 is a wash. I'm having the best time of my life. <laughs> and God is doing some amazing things. He's taking me to higher heights and deeper depths. And I'm all here for it. And I just want to say this. I know we live in a world where we're so tuned in to technology and social media. But what I want to say to the to you, and I don't know why this has been resonating with me so much lately, turn the TV off. God has been a place, and I wanted to do this before, like Monday through th Sunday through Thursday, I don't watch TV. And I've even found that I haven't been even watching a lot of TV on Friday and Saturdays because mm -hmm. I have other things to do. Turn the TV off. There's so many other things that God wants to do mm -hmm. in us, through us, and we're not going to get it from TV. We're, we're not going to get it from TV. We need to be studying in the word of God. We need to be studying in other um other areas, other literature that we may have, other books he wants us to read. There are other things that he wants us to do. Turn off the TV. Don't get so involved in what's going on with these stories. I like stories and movies too. Don't get me wrong. I am a movie. I am a professional movie watcher. I can <laughs> tell you exactly what's happening in the movie, what's going to happen. I'm a professional movie watcher. So I'm not telling you something that I am not doing myself. Right. We watched a movie on date night. I can't remember what it was. Falling Angel. The Angel has fallen, which is really good, by the way. Netflix, me, my husband. But other than that, I try not to engulf myself with all these shows and all these mm -hmm. things that are going on because they're not benefiting me. And yeah. that's just the bottom line. There is no value. There's no benefit. It's only entertainment. Yeah. It's only entertainment. And where I am going, I can't speak for nobody else. Where I'm going, I can't afford to have to be filled with a bunch of entertainment. I need mm -hmm. substance. Yeah. I need substance. There'll be a there'll be a season for entertainment, but right now I need substance. I need substance. Stretching does hurt. Stretching does hurt. And Latanya, um, Natasha, oh yeah, because you're with me in the leadership program. That's a whole another story. So yeah, so I'm excited. Okay. Well, you guys, if you want to catch up with Khadijah, go to KhadijahCarroll.com. We love you with the love of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for being a part of this broadcast. We thank you for sharing. We thank you for getting the message out to the masses and letting them know that you can manage marriage and mental health however you need, that you need the word of God, need the power of God to manifest in your life in order to do that. Amen. Amen. All right, Katisha, any last words? Be blessed, y'all. Don't forget to live on purpose. Live on purpose. All right, you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.